Music is the most powerful art form we have. It has the ability not just to convey emotions on its own, which it does so well, but to underscore emotional moments and bring the most out of them. And when video game developers harness that power, when they lean on music as a crutch to prop up their game design, they can elevate good moments into great ones, or bad ones into something passable. Take a game like 2012's Journey, for example. Now whether we still consider this game the light we once held it in is a separate discussion, this two-hour sand walking and jumping experience is a multi-publication game of the year winner, after all. But regardless of how you think about it today, Journey would not have any of the name power it has if not for the score. In the absence of traditional gameplay mechanics like combat and like puzzle solving, this game substitutes artistic spectacle. Of course, so much of that spectacle is in the visuals, but when the majority of the experience takes place in empty, sandy environments without those gameplay crutches, it's the music that drives you forward to reach your inevitable destination. Songs like Threshold stand out as a highlight in the midst of this emptiness and monotony. It immerses you in the, dare I say, journey. They make these otherwise boring stretches feel like genuinely important moments that you don't want to miss, while somehow simultaneously matching the feeling of the tedious grind and not letting you escape what you're doing in the moment. On the other hand, songs like Apothesis, Apotheosis? are attached to genuinely powerful scenes like these, the thrilling conclusion to your seemingly impossible to finish <coughs> journey. This song is beautiful enough to carry a moment on its own like Threshold, but in the context when it's paired to something already powerful, it elevates it into new heights. A song like this makes you feel like you're gliding through the air, while the visuals and gameplay let you live it. In a game like Journey, without much going on, it's so valuable to perfect the few things it does have, and the music is one of only a handful in this game. When you think about Journey, you probably think of the beauty and serenity, two powerful emotions that wouldn't exist without this game's perfect soundtrack. Austin Wintori, the composer of Journey and several other projects, understood this assignment to the letter. He created a soundtrack that nearly single-handedly took a Game of the Year winner from a boring hike through the nearest sand dune to legendary status. Again, Journey doesn't have much going on for it other than the atmosphere and music. To create an experience that wins so many Game of the Year awards and earns even more nominations without those gameplay crutches is special. But music is just as important in more complex games too. In fact, I'd argue it's more important. Consider a game like Persona 5 that mixes and mashes so many mechanics and story moments into one big stew. Moments like these share a stage with ones like Maybe these. And the funny thing is these two scenes happen within roughly 15 minutes of one another. It switches tones on a dime, but each one feels the way that it should, because the music sets the mood better than anything, and the music here is perfect in every instance. In this scene, for example, the soundtrack goes from somber as Yusuke discovers the sins and true feelings of his lifelong father figure in a setting he didn't ask for, to tense as our heroes find themselves in a danger they don't have an easy way out of, to hostile as Yusuke takes command of his life for the first time ever and spews anger towards the man that's held him down his entire life, to triumphant as he finally gains the power he's always had within him to fight back but didn't know he had until now. That is an um, excuse me journey, and it's so easy for all of those individual feelings to get muddled with everything the developers try cramming into one scene. How can you expect sadness, genuine sadness like this, to jump off the screen in a game that so often treats itself and its characters as a joke? How can you expect the comedic moments to land in a game that's so often so melodramatic? Well, the music. Persona 5's soundtrack lends an essential guiding hand to each and every one of these beats. Yusuke's discovery is complemented by regret. A simple, low piano melody that doesn't do much, but in that simplicity allows the heartbreak to shine through. The initial confrontation with Madarame is accompanied by Desire, a percussion and strings-heavy song that evokes feelings of hopelessness. Our heroes are backed into a corner and this song embodies it. Yusuke's eventual rejection of his doomed fate uses Awakening, a song with the anger embedded within needed to capture a character's breaking point into their persona discovery but an underlying sense of triumph and build-up as the true power hidden within finally takes over. This scene ends with Willpower, an aptly named song that feels like a battle theme for a hero who knows they're about to be some ass. None of these songs overpower the moment, but they add just enough kick to be felt. They steer the ship away from the tone it just indulged in, and toward the atmosphere it's trying to create. It's perfect sound direction. In every possible moment and feeling that comes up in Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal has its perfect complement. There are over 120 songs across these two games combined, and each one is put to perfect use. 
but music is just as special when it stands out and tells a story on its own, and for this I think of Hollow Knight. I love Hollow Knight, but it was never on my radar until years after it came out, and the soundtrack was the only reason I considered playing it at all. You see, I love platformers, but I have a condition known as amblyopia, it's real, which means I'm permanently blind in one of my eyes, which means my entire life is that fucking scene from Always Sunny where McPoyle tries cutting the credit card in half. What that means here is that, for as much as I love games with platforming elements like Hollow Knight, my depth perception is ass and I can't play them well. I also try to avoid Metroidvania games because I'm even more ass at navigating my way around a confusing environment than I am at perceiving depth. But I made an exception for Hollow Knight for one reason and one reason only. The soundtrack. I fucking love this soundtrack. One long night in college while writing a paper, I was listening to video game soundtracks on Spotify and Mantis Lords came on shuffle. A bombastic, epic boss theme that I had never heard before, but immediately captured my attention. I stopped everything I was doing, listened to the entire soundtrack, and went to bed immediately after, enamored with what I had just heard for the first time in my life. And I didn't complete the assignment and failed. Thank you, Team Cherry. But for as great as Mantis Lords is, it's just one small part of a soundtrack that tells a full story without spoken dialogue. Of course, there's something special about music that's so good that it makes you want to play an entire video game, but I think what's even more impressive is how this music here can tell a story even without words. The boss themes like Mantis Lord set the tone for impending battles, but songs like Green Path, City of Tears, and those like it give you a sense of the history of the settings you're traipsing through and the energy that persists there today. City of Tears, for example, feels particularly somber and particularly lonely. This setting that was once of great importance in the lore of Hollow Knight is now reduced to a shell of its former self. The rain falls consistently and the dimness persists throughout. There's something really sad that you can't escape about being in this city, and the song exemplifies that. But it's not just about being sad. The strings and vocalization that kick in about halfway through the song really lend themselves to the importance of this setting. You know that you're not just in some bleak environment, you're in a place that used to matter. Songs that tell a story like this are so important in a game like Hollow Knight, one where the lore and narrative are present but take a back seat in favor for not interrupting the stellar gameplay. Rather than your purpose in each setting and your ultimate end goal feeling lost in the weeds, the music fills in the blanks. You can feel the energy of the world around you just enough to want to keep going. It's that motivation that makes music more than just a powerful tool for video game developers. It's so strong that it can carry a narrative on its own. Video game music can transform an experience to its will, or carry it on its shoulders. It can motivate you for one final attempt against an impossible boss, carry you to tears in an emotional moment that otherwise might not feel so emotional, or keep you going through a video game that would struggle to capture your attention without a stellar soundtrack. Like I said earlier, music is the most powerful art form we have, and pairing it with video games, the best art form we have, creates untouchable experiences when both the composers and developers are at the top of their game. It's the reason your favorite video game carries the emotional significance that it does, and evokes the feelings that wouldn't exist without a score that brings them out of you. And that's why Life is Strange remains my favorite video game of all time. Quick sip of the potion. Songs like Threshold, oh my god, that's a lot of noises. In a game like Journey without much going on, it's so valuable to per per perfect. Oh my god. No, no, drive as loudly as you can through the parking lot, that's fine. A per- a per- wow, jeez. Are you eating back there? Alright, he's eating.